Hey guys, I'm Matt, and this is going to be a Unity tutorial on how to implement your own A star pathfinding algorithm in C sharp. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look, make sure it actually works. So here we're in the game, and this this map is, I believe, 150 by 150 nodes or tiles, and pathfinding works really good. You know, you click, they go there, very little uh, downtime on that. You can see we're running at 60 frames, give or take. And, well, if you had units selected, they'd be walking around. <laughs> so there you go. And so we have units walking. You can build something like a wall, and they'll walk around it. Perfect. All right. So let's go into MonoDevelop and take a look at how this was done. So we're going to go through the most common use case, which is the player has right clicked on the map and they are expecting the uh, units that they have selected to go to that location that they clicked. So that happens right here where we say they have right clicked on the map, they have units selected. All right, let's make a move. So we're going to play a sound saying that they clicked, uh, make sure that the units aren't gathering stuff, and then we're going to go to our move, move the units method, and we are going to send them the destination tile, which is where they clicked in our tile map, and then we're also going to send them a list of the selected units from our unit handler. So let's travel to our move the units method. And the first thing it does is it starts a coroutine called wait for it. And we're going to send this coroutine just the, the initial variables that we got from there, the tile and the units. So uh, what the coroutine is doing is it makes it so that we can process these uh, units separately and we don't have to do them all in the same cycle. So uh, we're going to go into a, a, a for each loop uh, uh, for every every unit that is in our units list we're going to say okay wait for the end of the frame and then process the unit that way if you have 20 units selected uh, you don't have to find 20 paths all in one cycle you can go ahead and do that in 20 frames you can also change this to be uh, a timed timed event instead of waiting for the end of the frame since that is a variable amount of time and uh, splitting up this this process is just good to increase the perceived speed of your pathfinding. It'll still be uh, as as slow as it always was, but it won't slow down the rest of your game because it has to grind to a halt to do all of these pathfindings for all of these units uh, in the same cycle before it moves on to processing graphics. Uh, all right, so enough of that. Uh, we move on, we're going to get a temp variable from our destination tile. And we're going to send that very we're going to send our destination tile onto a uh, into an array called find walkable tiles. And this is basically going to corkscrew out from the tile you clicked on if the tile that you clicked on was uh, for some reason unwalkable or you couldn't get to the tile or you can't get there, it's unwalkable. So it's just going to corkscrew out until it can find uh, a tile for the units to walk to, and it's going to send you that tile. So this is your new destination tile, is the temp. Next you're going to get the tile that the unit is on, and uh, you're going to send... Now finally we're going to actually get into the A star algorithm, and we are just going to send our the tile the unit's on and the destination tile that they want to go to. So we'll go into this A star algorithm. As you can see, we have our starting point and our goal point. First thing we're going to do if, uh, if we were unable to find a destination tile, a goal, so it's null, we're going to return. Uh, and also if the starting position is equal to the ending position, well, we're just going to end it. We're not going to go ahead and process the map. So first we need to initialize uh, all of our variables that we use for pathfinding. So to do this, we're, we have to go through each node. And uh, so this this part, I tried to 
uh, get rid of this by introducing a variable to tell me uh, the last time that the node was processed. That way I could uh, ignore the values that were in there if, uh, if the node was processed uh, by an earlier unit. But that was a big mess. Um, I wasn't able to figure it out. I got aggravated, went ahead, pre predefined all this stuff at the beginning of the algorithm. So you could probably optimize this out. But uh, I'm just going to go through and talk about what each of these variables does real quick. I assume whoever uh, is watching this is somewhat familiar with A star pathfinding. Uh, I'll go ahead and just talk about it for a second. It's similar to Dijkstra's algorithm, except it, uh, it doesn't find the optimal path. It sacrifices the optimal path for uh, speed. So it will find a suboptimal path somewhat quickly. And it does this by using a heuristic. Uh, this algorithm uses a Manhattan distance uh, heuristic. And you can, act, you can make it however complicated you want, uh, but that one's actually very simple, and I'll go ahead and uh, explain that later whenever we get to it. So first, these variables. We have a g-score, and the g-score is the distance from the starting tile to that tile. That's what the g-score is. So for the initial purposes, we're going to say it is the uh, max value. It's as high as you can get. Same things goes for the f-score except the f-score represents the distance from the starting tile to the destination tile. And uh, it estimates the remaining distance from the, the current tile that, is, that it's on to the destination by using your heuristic value and then adding that value to the g-score. And that's what makes the f-score. Simple stuff. Uh, next, we have the parent. This just makes it so that after we finish our pathfinding, we can uh, reconstruct our path from uh, the dest from whenever we get whenever we find the destination node. We can reconstruct the path using these parents. So we just want to set everything to null. Uh, next, we have these uh, is an open set and is in closed set. This is just uh, some optimization variables I threw in. I think. Uh, I think they worked out really good, really well. So is an open set. Uh, uh, basically what they're doing is it makes it so I don't have to do a dot contains on my list since these are just Boolean values. Uh, whenever I put them in the list, I set it to true. Whenever I take them out, set it to false. So I don't have to do any sort of searching through my arrays. So it's just big O of one, got it, no problem. Uh, the the close the is in closed set actually eliminates the need of having a closed set. If you're familiar with A star pathfinding, you'll know that most of the times you have an open set and a closed set of nodes. Well, if you have this closed set uh, boolean, you actually don't need the set at all. So you can uh, you can just throw that out altogether. All right, so after our map is initialized, all of our variables are set, we're going to initialize our open set. Now you can, you can actually use an array. Initially I used an array list. It was very inefficient because I was sorting it as a list. Uh, but I went on to implement a minimum heap. Uh, it's right over here. So, uh, you know, you just make it, uh, it's implemented using an array list, or I mean a list of world tiles. So, you know, no problem. It's base one instead of base zero. You just have to do that in order to make uh, in order to make some of this math work uh, for child and parent nodes. But it's actually it's really easy to implement. I'll go ahead and include this source code. It'll get it'll get you started. Uh, in whatever implementation or however you need to use it. But back to here. So we're just going to make our open set, no problem. Now we're going to set the g-score of our starting location to zero because it is zero away from itself. 
and then the F score is going to be uh, the zero plus the heuristic estimation from the starting to the goal. And you know, we'll go ahead and go into this and just take a look at what it's doing. So, you know, this is the Manhat Manhattan distance. Uh, it costs 10 to move horizontal and vertically in my map. It costs 14 points to move diagonal. So you get a bit of a penalty whenever you have to move diagonally. And Manhattan distance is basically the way you have to move in a big city with city blocks. So you have to move uh, in the x and y directions, you can't move, uh, you know, x and y of a triangle. You can't move across a triangle's hypotenuse. You just can't. There's buildings in the way. So that's what this is doing. You have an x component and uh, the z component because uh, of the way that I implemented my Unity map. So you get the you get those values. You just add them together, multiply it by your cost. And there you go. Uh, so we'll go back to. There we go. Go back to our A star algorithm. And after you set your initial G score and F score for your starting goal, now you're going to go into the main while loop of uh, the algorithm. This is where the magic happens. So you're going to get the current node that you're working on. It is, you get that from your open set, and it's going to be, you're, you're going to have to sort your set. Uh, by the lowest F score value. So that's what my minimum heap is doing. It's uh, keeping the smallest F score node at the root. So all I have to do is do a get root, grab it out of the uh, head of the list, and then just bubble down, keep the list in order, no problem. Uh, so now I have the smallest F score distance to the uh, destination. If it is the goal, then I'm going to reconstruct the path. And we'll go into that after we go through this section. Uh, but if it isn't the goal, we're going to go into, we're going to search its neighbors. Uh, now I did something stupid because I couldn't easily solve my problem of changing this cost. So these two chunks of code are basically the same, except this, this loop deals with the diagonal neighbors where this loop deals with the closer neighbors, the vertical and horizontal ones, left, right, top, bottom. So if the neighboring tile is not null, it is walkable. And if it is not in the closed set, we're going to uh, go into this if statement and then evaluate that tile as a uh, walkable tile. It's a tile that we're going to allow our unit to travel to. If the new G-score is lower, then uh, uh, the tentative, or if the tentative is lower than the current G score of the neighbor, we're going to go ahead and add it because that means it's a more optimal path than what we had. So, uh, you know, if here, if the tentative is less than what the current G score of the neighbor is, or if it uh, is not in the open set, then we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to set its parent equal to the current. Uh, we're going to set its g-score equal to tentative, and then uh, add that g-score to the heuristic cost estimation uh, to get to the uh, destination. Then, uh, if the neighbor is not in the open set, then we're going to add it. So, if you are not in the open set, we're going to add it to the open set, and then just bubble up. Keep it, uh, keep it ordered. If you don't use a heap, then I believe I was I was doing my sort uh, just at the very beginning of my while loop. I was doing this this huge sort on an array list. Uh, so that's where you can go ahead and put that if you don't want to use a minimum heap. But I recommend it. So then, uh, after after I I do the diagonal neighbors, I do the closer neighbors and I just charge a penalty of 10 instead of 14, making it more optimal to uh, go in straight lines rather than diagonal lines. Uh, simple stuff, simple stuff. So let's say you're on your current uh, and you, it is the goal. So we're going to go ahead and just reconstruct our path. So 
we send it the starting and the goal, obviously. We make a path, empty path. We're going to traverse backwards. We're going to start at the goal and go to the start. So it's uh, backwards, if that's how you want to think about it. So we're going to add to our path. We're going to add our goal to our path, and then just make an iterator out of our goal. Make our, an iterator that is our goal. And then iterate through each of the parents. So while your iterator has a parent that is not the starting node, you're going to add that parent to the path, and then increment your iterator. So that's all you're doing. You're, you're just traversing the parent, parent nodes so that you can get back to the start. And then at the end, you return your path. So we get back to our wait for it algorithm. Right here, we return to path. And if the path is not null, then the unit has a path. So we're just going to uh, stop his motion in case he was doing, he was in the middle of something. And then we're going to set his path equal to our path. And that's it. If you weren't able to find a uh, path, we're going to log it as no path and then break out because there isn't a path for the rest of the units. All right, and that's about it. So let's test it again, except this time let's test the worst case scenario, which is no path is available and see what the efficiency is. So we're just going to make, oh, he's attacking. He's attacking some zombies. All right, so we're just going to make a box here. Uh, oh, man, I don't think I have enough resources. Oh, oh, I'm cutting it close. All right. OK, so we're walking. Take a look at my frame rate. It's about 60. So we'll walk, hit there, nothing. It drops about 10 frames, and that's it. Or it drops about 10 frames a second, and that's it. So we get keep clicking. We got down to about 38, that's the lowest I saw. And that's not bad for searching uh, 150 times 150 nodes. That's quite a few. All right, uh, that's about it. I'm going to include the, uh, I'm going to try to include my minimum heap in the description along with uh, the code in here that I just went over. Uh, all right, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.